Hello everyone. Welcome to Digital Communication Tutorials. In this video, I am going to solve the second numerical on sampling theorem. Let me read out the numerical first. A signal g of t equals 10 cos 40 pi t multiplied by cos 400 pi t is sampled at the rate of 250 samples per second. Part A of the question says, sketch the spectrum of the sampled signal. Part B of the question says, specify the cutoff ideal reconstruction filter so as to recover g of t from g delta of t. Please note, g delta of t is the sampled signal. Lastly, part C of the question says, specify the Nyquist rate for the signal g of t. Let us start with the solution. First, let me write the g of t itself. So, g of t is equals to 10 cos 40 pi t multiplied by cos 400 pi t. In my previous numerical, I have shown how to apply Fourier transform on cos 2 pi f c t. However, if you look into the right hand side of this equation, let me call it as equation 1, we have two cos terms as a product of each other. It is not possible to apply Fourier transform directly to this particular set. So, what we should do is we have to now convert this cos terms into an addition term using a suitable trigonometric equation. For that, I will be using the expression cos A cos B is equals to 1 by 2 into cos A plus B plus cos A minus B. Let me call this as equation 2 and I will be substituting this equation into equation 1 and therefore the signal g of t now reduces to 10 multiplied by 1 by 2 into cos of let me take 400 pi t as a and 40 pi t as b so therefore it will be 440 pi t plus cos of 360 pi t let me simplify this so it will be 5 into cos 440 pi t plus cos 360 pi t. I will call this as equation 3 and I will eliminate this one. Now it is possible to apply Fourier transform on these cos terms. So we know that Fourier transform of cos 2 pi f 1 t is equal to 1 by 2 into delta of f minus f1 plus delta of f plus f1. I will call it as equation 4. Now I will apply equation 4 into equation 3. Therefore, Fourier transform of g of t which is actually g of f is equal to I have 5 multiplied by 1 by 2 multiplied by applying Fourier transform to cos 440 pi t first. So, this will be delta of f minus f1 is 440 divided by 2. So, it will be 220 plus delta of f plus 220. Then we have plus applying the same to the second term which is cos 360 pi t. It is 5 multiplied by 1 by 2 into delta of f minus f2, f2 is 360 divided by 2, it is 180 plus delta of f plus 180. Let me simplify this, so therefore it will be 2.5 whole multiplied by delta of f minus 220 plus delta of f plus 220 plus delta of f minus 180 plus delta of f plus 180. Let this be our equation 5. So, this is g of f. From this equation, we identify the frequency components, which are minus 220 plus 220 minus 180 and plus 180. So, I will write frequency components are minus 220 plus 220 minus 180 plus 180. With this information, now let us move on and draw the spectra of the input signal which is g of t. 
So I'll write the x axis here. Let this be the frequency axis. Y axis is where we will write g of f. On the x axis, let us now identify the frequency values. This is 180. Let this be 220. Somewhere here is minus 180. Here it is minus 220. Come back. Look at the amplitude of all the frequency components. It is 2.5. So all of these frequency components will have the same amplitude, which is 2.5. Right. So, this is the spectra of our input signal. Anyhow, part E of the question is to plot the spectra of the sample signal. So, how to plot the spectra of the sample signal? For that, we will have to now apply the sampling principle itself. Now, the mathematical representation of the sampled signal in the frequency domain is given by g delta of f and is equal to fs summation n varying from minus infinity to plus infinity g of f minus n fs okay so where you should note fs is equals to 250 samples per second that is given in the numerical so let me substitute that therefore it will be equal to fs into summation n varying from minus infinity to plus infinity g of f minus 250 n I will call it as equation 6. Now, I will go back to equation 5, which is the equation for g of f. Please note, we have the g of f term here. So, what I should now do is, I have to go back to equation 5 and g delta of f will be written by replacing wherever there is an f in g of f by f minus 250n. Therefore, g delta of f is equals to fs multiplied by summation n varying from minus infinity to plus infinity. I will have to now start writing g of f which is 2.5 multiplied by we have delta of f minus 250 n minus 220 plus delta of f minus 250 n plus 220. This is our first term representation. Then we have a plus delta of f minus 250 n minus 180 plus delta of f minus 250 n plus 180 right so this is the representation of the sample signal you can simplify it if you want now to obtain the spectra what we now should do is to substitute the values of n ranging from 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 etc etc till infinity and find out new frequency components for every value of n. To start with let me start by substituting n is equals to 0. Let this be my first case. So when n is equals to 0 g delta of f now reduces to 2.5 fs multiplied by delta of f minus 220 plus delta of f plus 220 plus delta of f minus 180 plus delta of f plus 180 right so identify the frequency components minus 220 plus 220 minus 180 plus 180 so now you will write frequency components are minus 220 plus 220 minus 180 plus 180 this is please note for n is equals to 0 now let us substitute n is equals to plus 1 so that is my second case so now the g delta of f is equals to 2.5 fs multiplied by delta of f minus 250 minus 220 plus delta of f minus 250 plus 220 then the second term delta of f minus 250 minus 180 plus delta of f minus 250 plus 180 right so let me simplify this okay so therefore, the new frequency components are minus 470, minus 30, minus 430 and minus 70, right? 
So now this is please note for n is equals to plus 1. Now do the same for n is equals to minus 1. Okay, so therefore g delta of f is equals to 2.5 fs into delta of f plus 250 minus 220 plus delta of f plus 250 plus 220 then plus delta of f plus 250 minus 180 plus delta of f plus 250 plus 180. Now I will simplify this. Right. So therefore the new frequency components are plus 30 plus 470 plus 70 and plus 430. Now in an interesting note you must note the frequency components for n is equals to plus 1 and minus 1 are exactly the same except for the change in their polarity. Right? So in a similar fashion you will have to compute the new frequency components for n is equals to plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3 etc etc. By doing this every single time you will obtain 4 new frequency components and you will have to collect them. After having done that you plot the spectra of the sample signal. Now I am going to give a rough sketch of the same. So x axis is the frequency axis, y axis is g delta of f. Right? So note down all the frequencies starting from n is equals to 0. We have plus or minus 220 and plus or minus 180. So let me mark them here first. Come back and note down the frequencies for n is equals to plus 1 and minus 1. Right? And we have noted everywhere the frequencies have the same exact amplitude which is 2.5. So you simply have to now draw vertical lines at each frequency indicated along the x axis and mark the amplitude as 2.5 fs. Please note fs should be written. Right. So this will be the spectra of the sampled signal which is the part A of the question. Now let us go back and see what is part B of the question. If you see the part B of the question is to specify an ideal reconstruction filter so as to recover G of T from G delta of T. To do that we have to identify the frequencies of our original signal which is G of T which is plus or minus 220 and plus or minus 180. We have to now design a filter which will extract only these frequency components from the sampled spectra. So go to the sampled spectra and identify where these frequency components are. So here you will see we have plus or minus 180 and plus or minus 220 here. We want only these frequency components. So the only way to obtain these frequency components at the output is to use a band pass filter. Right? Low pass filter does not fit here because you see we have minus 70, minus 30, plus 30, plus 70 and all. So using a low pass filter will take these values are also which we do not want. So I have to go for the part B of the question to use a band pass filter. Right? Now the band pass filter will have FL and FH. So FL should be less than 180 but greater than 70 by doing this so this is where somewhere here is where we will have that component in a very similar fashion fh should be now this should be greater than 220 but less than 430 okay so if i have to mark it somewhere it will be something like So this will be the band pass filter which will only extract the original frequency components of the input signal G of T that is part B. Let us now move on to the part C. Now the part C of the question says specify the Nyquist rate for the signal G of T. 
Now, the equation for the Nyquist rate is given by 2 multiplied by highest frequency component of the input signal, which is G of t. Correct? So, now when you go back to G of t signal in the frequency domain, you see what is highest frequency component? 220. Therefore, the Nyquist rate is equals to 2 multiplied by 220 is equals to 440 hertz. So, this is part C of the question. Right. With that, we have come to the end of this numerical. If you like this video, kindly like and share this video and subscribe to my channel for more information on digital communication. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.